All right, 60 minutes past nine on a Monday evening. And as you know, every week here on Upload, we get a brand spanking new house band of the week. And it's been so good to get live sessions back in the White Room studio. People performing live right here at the BBC again has been incredible. Well, this week, it's the turn of the multi-instrumentalist and super talented guy, Connell Kelly. Evening, Connell. Hey, mate. How's it going? Yeah, I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Chilling. Chilling. I like Chilling. it. I like it. Your live session earlier on blew me away. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it was it was good fun. I really enjoyed it. I've never done that setup before with the with the laptop and bits and bobs coming out of there, but it was good fun. I really enjoyed it. So we did a super stripped back session, just you tonight. We um, did. But you've done some incredible sessions over the years, not just um, with the gigs and stuff that you perform at and mm. things like that, but also not long ago you did an incredible <laughs> session for BBC introducing. At Made of Ale. Yes, I did. That was a real, that was really something. That yeah. was quite, uh, yeah, I spent the whole day pretty much just like staring around like a kid in a candy shop, feeling like I was completely out of my depth. <laughs> but it was good. It was great. It was such an amazing day. The thing is, when you go to Made of Ale, and I've been a couple of times now mm. with my work, and you walk through the corridors and they've just got pictures up either side yeah. as you're walking down this tiny, thin corridor and you go... People have played here. Yeah, that's like the thing. Big people. Yeah, when I um I spoke to the head engineer and I was just like making conversation, was just like, oh, like you've been here for what thirty years? How have you never considered doing anything different? Um, and he was like, oh well, you know, you get to record the biggest artists in the world. You get to record Beyonce and you two, and now you. And it was just like, <laughs> oh, why did you have to say? So I'm standing in the vocal booth thinking about Bono. And Beyonce singing. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm struggling to get my vocal take right. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm not worthy of this. But it went well in the end. And it's incredible when you walk in, isn't it? Because no Mm. matter which Made of Ale studio you walk into... The history. You you sort of walk in and you go... I recognise this from yeah. like TV sets and from sessions that people have done on Radio 1's Live Lounge mm. or on Six Music and things like that. And you instantly recognise it. Yeah. And you were in Made of Our 4. 4, yeah. Which is the one that's got the incredible balcony just mm-hmm. above it. Um, and that was the last time I was at Made of Our. I was um, in a session that was recorded in Made of Our 4. Yeah. It's just incredible in there. It's isn't it? lovely. I, I saw, um, I think Foles did a session mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. And with a whole crowd above them yeah, on the yeah, balcony, yeah. wasn't it? I remember that session. Yeah. And so go, that was like my favourite one that I'd seen in there. So going in there and being like, oh my God, I remember this. It was, yeah. it was such so surreal. Um, yeah. What a day. It flew as well. Like mm-hmm. the day just flew by. Um, but I made sure. Um, to try and keep grounded and like, okay, I'm going to take this in because, because they're, aren't they, they're moving, right? Then Yeah. Made of L is going to be no longer. No more. Very, yeah. Very so, shortly, so I was, I definitely had a sense of, okay, this, this is a hundred percent the last time you're ever going to be in here. This like a lot of people will never get the opportunity to come here to such a legendary place. So I need to really appreciate this while I'm here. Yeah. Um, so I made sure to soak it up. And James, James Thurlfall said to me before, and he was like, you need to make sure that you that you make the most of this and take some time to take it in because he's never been. Mm-hmm. So he was like, take it in, have an amazing day, do your best, but don't like, don't miss it, don't let it fly by. Yeah, so I'm yeah. so glad that I didn't. And you recorded it. You uh, of course did the session and uh, you videoed it, so people can go yes. and watch the session on your YouTube channel. They can go and watch it on my YouTube channel, which is just Connell Kelly, I think. Just. Yeah, I don't know. It's You'll it's got it. some weird URL of like loads of percentage and numbers and letters, but search out Connell Kelly in the search bar. It'll come Connell up. Kelly made a veil. It'll yeah, come up. It'll come up. It'll come up. Uh, now your session tonight mm. um, in the White Room Studio. It was great to see you perform live. And for people that sort of don't know your sort of sound and your normal setup, talk us through um, sort of some of the influences, how you describe yourself as an artist. Sure. So usually I um, I have a full band behind me. It's kind of like a full band sound. Um, when I'm making the songs and writing the songs, I play all the instruments myself and do all the recording and mixing at home. So it's quite self-contained. Hence, I can I can do a relatively good version just on my own because I know all the elements and stuff. But yeah, it, I guess it would be... I've been trying to figure out what I would describe my sound as recently because I've been struggling with the difference of what I want it to be mm-hmm. and what it actually is. I would like it to be kind of somewhere between Foles and Tame Impala. I think 
I don't know if it is that. Would you say that's about right? I, I think so. And I think that this is the thing, isn't it? With the sort of music that you're making, it, it sort of crosses a lot of genres because you've got your indie mm. stuff in there. You've got some nice pop, but some nice chilled elements too. Yeah. And when you fuse them all together, you sort of get this thing that you go, well, I don't really know what to call this. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's it's like alt pop, I guess. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to be someone that's sat here like, I'm doing something that's never been done before. Like, that's, that's not true, but it's... <laughs> also, that's really pretentious. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. want to do that. <laughs> Who would say that? Not me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it it is a bit hard to box it in when yeah. so much of what I'm trying to do is not box myself in. Um, but yeah, alt pop, I guess, is the way to go. Indie alt pop sort of thing. Can you remember the first time you sent tracks into us here on Upload? Yeah, I can. I remember the first time I came here was with James Humphreys for our track together, Tongue Tied. He was in Berlin and I came into the studio for the interview and he was on the phone um and then from that point i thought okay maybe they'll listen to like my stuff oh actually hang on tell a lie it was before that yeah it was my old band yeah yeah my old band watercolors <laughs> oh you were going all in that story i'm sitting here thinking go on go on you carry on about how that was the first time you were featured on upload <laughs> yeah no it wasn't you play was it you did you yeah, play it you did. I did yeah you played my time which mm-hmm. was by a band called Treehouse featuring my old band, Watercolours. Um, Yeah, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It was not long after we started the show, so coming up three years ago almost. And I remember hearing it on the uploader thinking, this is great. And then looking up the video that you guys had done Mm. for this, and it was all like a one-take thing, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, Just like a one-pan shot all around everyone in in the performance space. It was, yeah, and it's the same guy... The guy that videoed it um, is like my guy for video, Elliot Withers. He um, he did the Made of Ale thing. He's mm-hmm. done all the music videos I've done so far. I love him. He's brilliant. Um, yeah, that was that was good fun actually. I, I remember making that song, um, like producing it with the guys. It was pretty much my idea. I say it was us feature like the band featured on it. I very much pushed like. I think we should feature on this track. So mm-hmm. I featured on it. The others kind of played a little bit, but I made sure to be very hands-on with the whole process. Yeah, um, yeah, it was great fun. Really enjoyed it. And when you heard it being played out on the BBC for the first time, how was that? It was great. It was that's a feeling that doesn't get old. No? It really doesn't. And yeah. th- this is it when you're sort of doing a track, and you know, by title, it was a, a, a track that you were featuring on, and, mm. and all that sort of stuff. So when you first got your own solo stuff featured yeah. here on the BBC. That was, was that better or it was better, yeah, of course <laughs> it was of course it was better. It, um I remember because it, it was my cover of Valerie that you made track of the week mm-hmm. and it blew my mind that you'd done that. It absolutely blew my mind because it was just a, a little kind of thing that I knocked out. And, and this is it, Connell, right? And this is it because you 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 have this vision of oh, it's just something I knocked out. But then when we <laughs> listen to it, we're like, oh my god, this is incredible! It's blowing my mind, right? Mm. And whenever I talk to you about your music, whether that be sort of on interviews that we've had or outside of work, when I've met you up for outside of work and had a drink with you and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I will absolutely gas you up about your music. <laughs> you do because you do gas you're me up about so it. incredible at it. But you sort of do this. I'll stop. Oh, whatever. Yeah. But you need to stop being so blinking humble about it because well, you do incredible things and you, I don't think you even realise it sometimes but, uh, I guess that's <laughs> the thing with anything though you you only ever focus on the things that you can't do or the things you mm-hmm. could do better and I never want to to sit back and be like yep you know what I'm as good as I need to be I, I'm great whatever I yeah. always want to like, I don't give myself a hard time but I always want to be pushing there's, I can always be better there's always something that I can be better at and I yeah. uh, never want to stop that yeah and that's a comfortable place to be in it is being I, I take uncomfortable with where you're at i guess i take <laughs> massive comfort in knowing that whatever i produce i'll look back on it in a year's time and think oh why did i do that i can do better now because you've you've bettered yourself and you've yeah. learned new stuff yeah and I, and I do that now with my first releases and with stuff with the band everything with that old band i listen to and i'm like oh I'm much better now. <laughs> and I will continue to do that. In, in a couple of years' time, I'll look back on this stuff I'm releasing at the moment and be like, oh, oh no. But, but that's part and parcel. It is part of it. And I do love everything I do at the time. 
So. <laughs> At the time. Listen. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the tracks that you performed in session for us earlier on tonight. Yes. Um, let's start with your own track, Control. Yes. Tell us about this track. Remind us all about it. So this was a track that came out in 2020, at back end of 2020. I think it was November. Um, it's one that was painful to make because it was a grueling pro there's a lot going on in that recording of that track um and it took me i released it in november 2020 i started writing it end of 2018 i think and it took me pretty much a full year to make it um because it was trying to i was trying to fuse together so many different things i that i hadn't done before i was trying to break away from the band that i was in find my own sound that was different and that was the first thing that i did that was like ah this is different this is more me um mm -hmm. i wrote that before i wrote the the single that came up before it in my head that was the first one i wrote um and it was a slow burner it got played on radio one like six months after it came out and then it got played again um so it got a really nice reception but it was a slow burn to get there and to be honest might still be my favorite song that i've released maybe. it's a brilliant track i really like it it's a brilliant track and i think that the testament to the fact that it took a while for it to get that radio one play mm. is something that perhaps um you know you shouldn't take as a oh it took forever to get a radio oh, one play. no no because it sort of stands testament to the track really is mm. that even after 16 you know six months of it being played out on the radio here and other stations and on stations around the world on internet stations and whatnot and yeah it had amazing reception amazing write-ups yeah. in music magazines and blogs and, and stuff like that and yeah. then bam that radio one play comes yeah it was definitely like i i don't see it as like oh my god it took ages to get there um it was just kind of it's nice that I don't need to rely on the hype of the songs out and it's new mm -hmm. for it to get that sort of attention. That gives me comfort in knowing, okay, I did a good job there. The production of it is the best I've ever done, I think. I'd say it's up there. But yeah. a gruelling process to get there. Gruelling process. Don't have particularly fond memories of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot of like... Smacking my head against a brick wall, it felt like the whole time. <laughs> Why am I putting this track together again? Yeah, Not again. <laughs> and that's the thing when you when you do it the way I do it, where I do it all myself. Mm -hmm. It's so you get so stuck. Like when you get stuck, you get really stuck, and you get totally lost in your own thoughts, which is not the best. No. Um, but yeah, we got there in the end. In the end, we got there. <laughs> um, let's talk about the fact that you do all your your own stuff. Mm. And we'll probably touch again on this throughout the week because I think it's something that so many people, um, particularly when they're in a similar situation to you, getting into that first steps of breaking into the music industry yeah. and finding their feet and finding their sound, will do the whole DIY thing um, and bedroom recording and mm. all that sort of stuff. But I think that there's no one that does it quite like you because you do the music production, mm. you do your own sort of marketing, social media content. Yeah. And it's sort of the era, really, for DIY musicianship, but not yeah. just the music, the whole thing. The expectation on artists is huge nowadays that you need to be an expert in everything before anyone will do anything for you like it, it's almost like you can't that the whole record label thing is so old-fashioned expecting that a record label will listen to your music and pick you up off the merit of the music mm -hmm. it, I, that doesn't happen anymore i just don't think it happens you have to get yourself set up entirely um so yeah i make i make a, a special effort to be as self-contained as I possibly can. There's certain things that you can't, like I can't film the videos myself, um, <laughs> but I can take the photos myself and I do that. Um, I can't... Well, I try and do the mastering myself, but I, I send it off to a friend of mine who does it because at that stage in it, you need to, you need the distance. Yeah. It. But and everything else is... I think when you're doing things like mastering as well is that you sort of... There are experts in it and they are experts for a reason, right? Yeah. And you've spent so much time and effort curating and making th this track with all the elements getting just right for you. But mm. to make that final bit of polish... You, you just need help. You just need help. Yeah. And it's almost like, you know, why fall at the final hurdle when yeah. you can just get that nice little buff at the end? To be honest, 
recently I've been thinking about taking the pressure off myself a little bit um, and maybe having someone else, mi- like someone else mix my stuff because mm-hmm. um, it sounds great. I'm really pleased with the way it all sounds. Could sound better. It's not quite commercial <laughs> and it could be. And I think I need to yield at the fact of like, okay, you're playing all the instruments, you're doing all the recording, you're writing everything. You've come so close with the mixing. Just let go a little bit yeah. and let someone else take the reins and just see. Because I, I feel I, I stand in my own way a little bit sometimes with it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the perfectionist thing <laughs> is <laughs> that side of my brain is just like but squirming. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And no. the fact that you're at that point where you're thinking, next step, mm-hmm. what do I do to better myself now? And, you know, for you, that, that, is probably a logical step to go down. Yeah, I think so. And we'll talk more about the rest of the stuff this week. Um, We'll get onto it, I promise, because we've got you all this week. I don't want to go through everything tonight. (laughs) The life and times of Connell Kelly in one evening. We've got plenty of time to talk. (laughs) Um, Let's talk very quickly about the Billie Eilish cover that you did, because you've done amazing covers um, over the last 18 months or so, Mm. particularly through lockdown. as almost like a sanity project, if anything. 100%. (laughs) Like, that. those covers were my vice massively in the mm-hmm. first lockdown like do it for, for those who don't know i did a thing where i did a cover in each day in 24 hours um so i'd pick a cover like people would request Which is crazy covers. in itself that's and, nice. <laughs> and i would um yeah record a, f- a full produced mixed version of the song and upload it at the end of with the day. a video with a video at the end of the day and i did that i didn't do it consecutive days I, I did eventually, but at the start I didn't. Um, and yeah, that kept me busy for like full days. So I could space it out. I would spend a day just doing this and then I'd spend a day thinking about what I was going to do next and then I'd do it. And mm-hmm. so the first lockdown, I can't remember how many I did. Squillions. <laughs> it was a lot. You did quite a lot. And the fact that, you know, you had great reception from them mm. and um, a lot of people got involved when it came to you going, hey, listen, I'm going to do another 24-hour covers project thing and the amount of suggestions that you'd get people, in. <laughs> people laugh it up. It's, it's borderline frustrating how much people lap it up because I'm like, I wish you'd pay this much attention when I release my own music. <laughs> and literally, like, the responses, there's just so many and I'm like, oh, just like... Go on my Spotify and listen to stuff if you care this much. You're clearly watching. Maybe that next step is to do covers more. <laughs> Maybe it is. And you know, <laughs> you know what? It's every time I go to a release, I'm thinking, should have done some covers in the lead up to this, get people engaged, and then I can just be like, by the way, got a song. Now listen to this one as well. Yeah, yeah. I, maybe I'm being dramatic. People are, people are very nice about my own stuff, but the response with the covers mm-hmm. was, yeah. It's great. amazing. It is great. Um, before we let you go for the evening, I want to talk very quickly about Mallory uh, mm-hmm. because it's a, we're going to play the proper r- r- actual oh, studio version um, in just a second. Cool. Talk us through this track. I know we've spoken about it before, but remind us about it. So uh, this is my latest release. Um, it is the first time as a solo artist that I've written a kind of love song. I don't know if you can call it a love song. It's more of a infatuation song because <laughs> it's not really love. It's not like soppy love. It's not soppy love. It's more like obsessive kind of love. But it's funny. So I um, when I wrote it, and, th- and this got quoted on Radio One. Okay, right. right. When, when I go. wrote it, I was living with my housemate Matt Shimasu, makes yeah. music as Shimasu. Um, my other housemate Jack Cooper. Jack yeah. Louis Cooper, he was in Southampton at the time, and Matt's girlfriend, Emily, was with us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I was writing this song, and I was trying to figure out... I knew I wanted a name as the title, but I didn't know what, and I just had the name Emily stuck in my head. Not because of her, oh, but it was awkward. just in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't get it, and I was like, Emily, nobody quite... No, it was just, I couldn't stop. Oh, so no. in the end, I, I told them... And, the, and I was like, I'm, I'm going to change it. Just from the faces. It was like, okay, I need to change this. <laughs> I'm not going to get away with I this. Bet that went down like a bucket of cold sick. <laughs> so, I've written a love song about your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so I changed it 
to Mallory, um, which I now prefer. But Good. yeah, when it got played on Radio <laughs> One, Gemma Bradley said that. And, oh, and I was no. like, oh no, everyone's going to think I'm secretly in love with my housemate's girlfriend. Oh. I'm not. Disclaimer. It was just the name. Good news for all involved. <laughs> Matt and Emily are safe. You're safe, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what a story. Oh. Uh, Connell, <laughs> give us a good shout out for people who want to go and find out more about you. Of course, you're Band of the Week all this week, so yes. people can come and listen to you all this week and hear the tracks that you recorded. They can. But if we want to find out more about you on your social media and stuff, where do people go? What do people search? Um, just search up Connell Kelly, which is C-O-N-A-L Kelly. Um it's at Connell Kelly on Instagram. I think Facebook is Connell Kelly Music. Um, Twitter's Connell Kelly Music. But yeah, Connell Kelly, there's not a whole lot of them. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, You'll pop up. You'll yeah. pop up. Request a cover. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and listen to all the other blinking tracks as and well. That, which you're about to hear. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you want to introduce it? Why not? I will introduce you. Introduce you? Introduce, introduce it. you. <laughs> introduce me. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, my name is Connell Kelly and this is my latest single, Mallory, Nobody Quite Like You.